Ryan, thanks so much for sharing your garden with us. And now one of our favorite guests on Central Texas Gardener, Sharon Lovejoy, is back with My First Bird Book, uh, a way to help parents connect their children to the a love of nature through birds. Yes. It's always great to have you on the program. Thanks, We're going to start off with a bird word. What, these are things that you drop throughout the book, I take it? Well, I, I want children to understand that birds have a language. And so in Texas, you might hear this late at night. Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you? All. Who cooks for you? <laughs> the you all would be the Texas one. Y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who does cook for us? The, the barred owl with okay. the bright red eyes. If you go out with a flashlight at night and you shine it up in a tree where you hear somebody asking who cooks for you, mm -hmm. you'll get that bright red eye shine which mm -hmm. you see in a barred owl's eyes. And they are magnificent birds. They are. They and are. Uh, actually, if you hear them speaking to each other from tree to tree, a little spooky at night. It's kind of wonderful. It is wonderful. And, and barn owls, too. When yeah. you're out here, you hear them going shh, like fingers on a chalkboard. Mm -hmm. Spooky. Spooky. Well, kids like spooky, they too. They love spooky. And I like <laughs> kids to go out at night to enjoy nature. I think it's important. Well, and that's why you, you've created this most recent book, beautifully illustrated with your Thank images. You. Thank you. And uh, it comes as, as such a cute little kit. It comes as a feeder as well. Well, I wanted that because one of the surest way to, ways to stop a child from loving nature is getting them out in the morning when it's 38 degrees and they have to wear boots and mittens and carry binoculars, which they will not be able to focus or find a bird. Mm -hmm. So when you have a window mount bird feeder and it has a little, uh, a little porthole in the back mm -hmm. as it attaches to the window, children can go right up to it if they don't move a lot and watch local species that are easy to identify. And mm -hmm. I picked out a few dozen easy to identify birds. We're not trying to stump the child. <laughs> We're trying to get them excited. <laughs> yeah, good idea. <laughs> Don't quiz them on the, on the Latin names no. of these species. <laughs> Although they do remember that a robin is called Turdus migratorius. That's their favorite bird name. <laughs> and what child wouldn't like that? <laughs> <laughs> Even a grown-up child. <laughs> right, right. So uh, I think that's a, it's a wonderful concept and uh, it's so important of people to open the gateways of wonder and, and nature to their children. And, and birds are, even as an adult, we have that fascination and love of birds. Truly. I think the important thing is that while you're opening that gateway, you're also yourself. You're getting yourself involved in the birds, and you become enthralled with it, too. Mm -hmm. So you're helping them. They're helping you. The children mm -hmm. are helping you. It's wonderful. Well, let's talk about a couple of the other, the, some of the other species uh, uh, that you, you highlight in the book. Uh, mockingbirds. Them, are, oh, I love mockingbirds. Me They're too. so brilliant, and they have so such a repertoire. <laughs> and they can come after you if you're around their right. nest. I've had them pull my hair out, but you know, they're, they're here. They're active. They're easy to watch. They're they're fruit eaters, and mm -hmm. they'll eat worms and fruit, and um, they're just wonderful to watch. And I don't think there's a more joyful sound in the world than to sit and listen to a, um, a mockingbird at sunset on a beautiful day. I agree, <laughs> except at sunrise on a beautiful day, <laughs> right. greeting the day. Right. They are so much fun to watch. And, you mm -hmm. know, I love uh, red breast. It's hard because in Texas here you have over 620-some species of birds that pass through. So I've got about 34 mm -hmm. in here that you would see in Texas. And little downy woodpeckers. Oh, those are so cute. Oh, they're wonderful <laughs> to watch. Red-breasted nuthatch, which mm -hmm. is... Uh, called the topsy-turvy bird because they spend so much time upside down, mm -hmm. which makes it easier for them to find food hidden under bark that other birds don't find. Uh -huh. yes. And, you know, the, uh, uh, the woodpeckers are just fabulous to mm -hmm. watch. Uh, and hummingbirds, of course. Love the hummingbirds. Yeah. You're so blessed here. You have all those great salvias and penstemons that mm -hmm. the hummers love. And uh, I... That's one of the easiest birds to tame in the garden. Mm -hmm. We have them landing on the hummingbird feeder as we carry it to the hook, and they'll land in your hand if you have a little something like a little bottle cap or red one right. filled with filled with hummingbird syrup. So yeah. those are the most fascinating. They are amazing just to, and, and again, it, even as an adult, uh, the, the sense of wonder and joy takes, takes you right back to that childlike place. And it's so great to make the connection for the kids so that they will have those memories for the rest of their lives. It makes them kinder. They, mm -hmm. That makes them watch out for the world. It makes them more sensitive to the animals in the world. And that's something we have to do. We can't just let them be hooked up to computers because it cuts them off. 
Right, right. Well, there are all sorts of wonderful little anecdotal stories throughout the book. Um, uh, our producers picked out a few. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> one, has to, one has to do with dirty birds. <laughs> well, birds, <laughs> dirty birds. Um, if you see birds on the ground and they're flapping their wings and stretched out in dirt and tossing dirt all over, that's the same way we take a bath. That's a bird bath for them. Mm -hmm. And that gets rid of, you know, they'll preen themselves and they'll get the oil and the dirt off and they'll get rid of critters that might be living on them. So it's mm -hmm. just as important to have a little bit of dirt for them and, of course, water. Water's the magic elixir. All right. Tell me about hair to horns. Part of our body is keratin. We have alpha keratins and beta keratins. It's our hair and our fingernails. And a rhinoceros horn is made out of keratin and alligator claws and bird feathers. So it's <coughs> wonderful to say to kids, what do, what do we have in common with alligator claws and you know, just to, mm -hmm. to draw them in and give them, give them that link to all these magical things. And feathers are amazing. Yeah. One, one final little anecdotal thing that you, I think it's such a fun fact. Uh, kids ask, why don't the birds fall off the limbs at night? Yeah, that is fascinating. And um, the back of a bird's calf has a thin tendon so that when they land, and they land on a branch, the tendon causes their, their claws to clutch the branch so that even if they fall asleep, and the fun thing about birds is they may only have half their brain asleep and one eye open, but they're able to ride out <laughs> storms on a branch. So it's an amazing thing. So mm. it, it's a tendon that snaps their claws into into place. They are amazing critters. Now you've brought some things to share and I want to kind of... And I don't want you tasting them. Uh, okay, <laughs> I promise not to taste the suet, but <laughs> simple little things that, uh, that folks can do with their kids that will, again, get them very interested in, in, in the birds and also provide some sustenance to the birds. A sunflower is one of the easiest things to grow in a garden, and it's one of the best bird foods, and it'll attract a multitude of birds. They love black oil sunflower seeds. It's inexpensive, and uh, it'll draw a multitude of birds. It's right at the top of my list of top 10 foods for birds. And the dried flowers have a beauty all their own. They do. They're they fabulous. They're great. And then um, another thing we can grow in our gardens that I'll the kids will up. love Gourds, which are one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what better thing? You can grow musical instruments, bird houses, bee houses, and this is a house for a wren. Mm -hmm. And right next to it, right Another next to Another wren you, house? <laughs> yes. I love this. This was by accident. Right, okay. This it, was by accident. This was, it became mm -hmm. a wren house. I had it hanging on a garden shed. Okay. And I uh, ended up tacking it at the bottom so mm -hmm. that the babies wouldn't fall out. But the mama wren went in and built a nest, as she will do in garden gloves and many mm -hmm. other things, but mm -hmm. that works and children love seeing something unusual. You just like hang this on a wall somewhere uh -huh. under, under an eave, overhang. Under an eave, right? right? And then you'll get to a, a wren nesting in there. And I, I heard wrens this morning when I was out on my walk. Oh, there Austin. We have Carolina wrens all yep, over. Yep. Yeah, they're just wonderful. They are saucy and they are fearless. <laughs> okay, now what, I don't think we have time for the suet, but tell me about this guy. Believe it or not, carve your pumpkins, use your pumpkins for Halloween and Thanksgiving. <laughs> And, and Christmas if you do pumpkin pie, but save the seeds for the birds. They love mm -hmm. them. Okay, easy to do and uh, e uh, very easy to dry out the seeds as well. That's right. And the birds will and appreciate And you can nibble them, them too. <laughs> Absolutely, if, not bad toasted. I love them. <laughs> All right, well, we'll save this suet for next time. All right. We'll, we'll just keep those pine cones ready for you. Okay. It's always a joy talking to you. It's my pleasure. Yes, uh, any next adventures for you? What's the next project? Oh, yeah. I just finished a middle grade novel for children. Oh, excellent. And um, let's hope. All right, <laughs> well, uh, thank you again for being a part it of our program. Pleasure. Always nice to have you here. And uh, we look forward to the next project. Coming up next is our friend, Daphne Richards. Mm -hmm.